I'm honored to announce this year's annual Avijit Courage Award. This is the second annual Avijit Courage Award. And this year's award goes to Avinash Patel. And um, I, I guess you will be coming up here quite a few times, so I will spare you this time. You, the, I'm sorry, we have this, like, I don't know, uh, we have, uh, somehow we have got this, like, introduction to introduction to introduction. So bear with us. And uh, he is the current executive president of Maharashtra Andha Shroddha Nirmulun, Nirmulun Shomiti. You know, this is Hindi, and I know how to speak Bangla, which also comes from Sanskrit. And the Hindi-speaking people always laugh at us for not pronouncing it the right way. I did mess it up, Avinash, um, which means, which actually means, this is easier, Blind Faith Eradication Committee. And I am happy to mention that this award also comes with $5,000. Congratulations. Congratulations, Avinash. And thank you. Thank you very much for coming all the way from India to accept this award. And um, Amit Paul, our beloved uh, Director of Communications, will be actually introducing Avinash and will do a better job than me because I think he speaks Hindi. And um, in more details shortly. But first, I have been asked to introduce two of our fallen comrades. Uh, can we have... Oh. All right, okay. I thought we were going on both sides, but that's okay. Um, I actually knew one of them very well, Avijit Roy. I lived with him for 13 years. I worked with him. I enjoyed life with him until it ended very abruptly. And uh, thanks to FFRF for starting this award since last year. Um, on his name. And the person, the other person, Dr. Narendra Tabulkar, who founded MANS in 1989, the organization uh, Avinash runs now. While I did not know him personally, but I have immense respect, Avijit and I both have immense respect for his work and the sacrifices he made for all of us. But both of them, both of them were killed for their work, for their writings, and for their belief, or maybe we should say for their non-belief. As the news clip says, Avijit loved to write. That was his passion. This was actually cause of our, lot of our fights, but that's a different story for another day. And he, he was a prolific writer. He wrote eight books, hundreds and hundreds of articles and blogs in such a short period of time. I think he was 43 when he died. His books extended in topics from like philosophy to science to literature. But in a press release, the Islamic militants, who later marched with Al-Qaeda of Indian subcontinent, mentioned that they targeted us, both of us, uh, Avijit and me, uh, for our writing, specifically for two of Avijit's recent books. And Virus of Faith and social and scientific basis of homosexuality. Many of you already know that we were attacked by these machete wielding Islamic militants in a book fair when we were visiting our homeland for a book signing trip in 2015. Avijid died Avijit, I'm very sorry, I'm very confused with this. Um, Avijit died in the hospital and um, 
obviously, I survived. Uh, with four machete stabs on my head and a slice of gum and numerous wounds all over my body. The picture, I was actually expecting a picture. Uh, yes, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The picture on display, while graphic, we thought it is necessary to show because it gives a glimpse of the brutality we, the atheists, face all over the world. We talked about it. Uh, I think we'll just move back to the previous picture, the books that I, we had. Um, uh, so these are the books that I was mentioning that Avijit has written. He wrote eight books and edited two. And uh, the other two books, the pictures of the two books that we have, um, if we could have that, uh, those are the two books, uh, The Virus of Faith and The Basis of Homosexuality, Scientific and Social Basis of Homosexuality, uh, were the reasons that they attacked us. After the attack on us, the Islamic militants vowed to kill one atheist blogger every month in Bangladesh, and they managed to do so. The impunity was so so high, the government just stayed quiet. They didn't say a thing because they thought it's, it will be politically murderous for them to even say that we have the right to live in the country. So the, the Islamists killed, managed to kill three other bloggers and also they managed to kill the two publishers of those two books um, I had a picture, yeah, these, these two books. So they, they actually managed to hack the two of the publishers in their offices. One died and the other one barely survived. This is the story of me and Avijit. And I know too much about it. Let me tell the story of Dr. Dabulgar before I get carried away, because Avinash is here, and uh, we are giving the prize to Avinash and their organization because of the sacrifices that their organization has made, and Dr. Dabulkar has given his life for it. Dr. Dhabulkar decided to become a social worker after working as a medical doctor for 12 years in Maharashtra, in India. He founded MANS the, com, and campaigned against religious superstitions prevalent in India. He was the editor of the renowned Marathi Weekly uh, and he fought against the Godmen. You know, they are very big all over in India who claimed to perform miracles, medical miracles. He also relentlessly fought for the equality of Dalits, the untouchables, and against violence rooted in Hindu caste system. He received numerous threats, but as far as I know, he refused to take any police protection from the government. And he was gunned down and murdered on 20th of August, 2013. Let me read one of his quotes. Um, I think we had it. Um, we have a quote, yes. So let me read that quote for you, um, which is also on the screen. Sowing seeds of reason in the mind is not an easy job. However, reason uttered repeatedly does take you a step ahead. The utterance converts into a movement. If people involved in the movement practice what they propagate, the movement culminates into a union, which is a good thing to happen. If, in addition, the union jumps into a struggle for change, nothing like it. But climbing up these steps exhausts you considerably. I am treading this path with whatever ability I possess, knowing fully well that it is endless. And endless it is. It does seem ever so endless today, more than ever, doesn't it? It's like everywhere, there's nowhere to hide. 
Charlottesville to Istanbul, Bangladesh to, to Saudi Arabia, India to Nigeria. There is nowhere, nowhere else to go. But, or maybe it is too soon to despair. You know, sometimes, I don't know. I also think that we should not give up hope. Even if the battle feels increasingly difficult, I haven't given up hope yet. Human progress is never linear. It demands immense sacrifice, struggle, and dedication. Sometimes you have to, you have to take two steps backward just to make one step forward. Let's not lose hope. I haven't. May there be a day when we will not need any award, any such award as, you know, Avijit Courage Award. I think that should be our goal. That is the best goal, best way to honor the Avijits, the Narendras of the world. Thanks to FFRF. Thank you all for being there. Thanks, Avinash, for coming all the way and for being there and for fighting this battle together. Thank you. Uh, so just to give you a better idea of uh, Dr. Dabolkar, and especially of the willful way in which the Indian government has botched up uh, the investigation uh, into his uh, murder, his assassination. We're playing a short clip. This is from a year ago, but even as to date, there have been no convictions as far as I know, and of course, Avinash can uh, supplement me on that. So just a short clip of a minute or so, and please disregard the hyper-visual style of uh, Indian broadcast media. You know, they do this for everything, regardless of what the subject is. So we'll see just a short one-minute clip. It has been six years since rationalist Narendra Dabulkar was shot dead in Pune, but his family continues to seek justice. The trial into this case has not even started, and the CBI is yet to trace the murder weapon. The case is now personally being monitored by the Bombay High Court. The family of Dr. Dabulkar has earlier filed an affidavit questioning the CBI's investigation, pointing out to several loopholes in the probe. This was actually that bridge where, at, uh, uh, where on the morning of 20th August 2013, Dr. Narendra Dabulkar was out on his morning walk. This was the spot where he was shot dead uh, and he actually came from uh, the left end of the bridge. That's where the shooters spotted, them, uh, spotted him. The shooters were on the bike. This was the end from where he was coming. The shooters spotted him. The shooters were on the bike. And one by one, both of them, they, sh uh, they fired rounds from their country-made pistol, which now, according to CBI, one of the accused has dismantled and thrown into a side creek. And they're trying to find it. But these many years have passed. And a murder case, which was talked about so much, the trial is yet to start. So you can see that. So I, I stand corrected, this is from August 2019. I had another clip and I was getting a bit confused. So six years uh, later, this is the situation. Dr. Narendra Bolkar was the founder of the Maharashtra Andhashrad Nirmulan Samiti or the uh, committee for the, in Maharashtra for the eradication of superstitions, superstitions and blind faith, killed on August 20, 2013. His sacrifice was not in vain. He was awarded one of India's highest civilian honors because of the pressure built um, due to his death. There was an uh, anti-superstition bill uh, passed at the state level. Uh, August 20th has now been declared in India the National Scientific Temper Day. Uh, and he was uh, instrumental in getting all this done. Dr. Dabulkar was a very fascinating figure, a medical doctor by uh, training. He was also an international level sports player, so a really well-rounded person. Uh, Avinash will tell you more about uh, the, uh, the work his group is doing, but they tackle all the evils of Hinduism on all fronts, from the caste system to superstitions, uh, so-called miracles, godmen, it's just incredible. It's in just one state, but I'll put that one state in quotation marks. It's a state of 120, 130 million people. It's the state with Mumbai in it, so it's an amazing work. It's amazing work that they're doing. 
uh, in a state that's larger than most countries in the world. And they're doing it now in the face of a Hindu nationalist government led by Narendra Modi that's very hostile to the sort of work they're doing. In fact, after uh, Dr. Dabolkar's assassination, there have been three more murders of rationalists uh, in the same region of India by this very same group, allegedly, that carried out Dr. Dabolkar's assassination. It is such a, an honor for us to have Avinash Patel, all the way from India, the current head of MANS, uh, to be here to receive the Avijat uh, Roy Courage Award. We were initially considering giving it to the organization. Now we're giving it to Avinash himself because he actually is a volunteer head. He doesn't receive any salary at all. He still has no security. He has refused it, even after the way his predecessor was heinously assassinated. And uh, so Avinash is doing incredible work. And there's free literature uh, available on MANS on that table over there. There's a sign-up sheet, too, if you're interested in more uh, information on Avinash. And so it's with uh, real pleasure that uh, we have Avinash to come up to receive the Avijit Roy Courage Award. And uh, as a treat to you, he'll be performing miracles on stage, just to show <laughs> how ridiculous that entire notion is. <laughs> I'm just uh, showing you the miracles uh, famous um, uh, by Satya Sai Baba. He's just showing this uh, the hands like this, coming them, and I'll taking golden ring, a golden hand from that. Huh? <laughs> this is a plastic thumb. Yeah. And in that, I have taken this <laughs> ring. <laughs> Second one is, I will just take this ring from my tongue. I don't have to hold on, in, on my tongue. Huh? I'll just one take, if there is a blood from the, my tongue, I will take uh, on my handkerchief behind you. It's okay. <laughs> and then I will show. First, I will show this, and second, I have taken and take this one. <laughs> On the 42nd National Convention of FFRF, Avijit Roy Courage Award 2019. Dear colleagues, Namaste again. I am Avinash Patil, Executive President of Maharashtra Andhashadhan Iman Samiti in India. I am here to receive the prestigious Avijit Roy Courage Award on the behalf of my organization, MANS. I, dedic I dedicate this award to our luminary leader, late Dr. Narendra Dabokar, and strenuous efforts of our thousands of activists that are struggling for the same cause, rationality. 
Today, I remember hundreds of thousands of well-wishers and supporters from India and abroad who have been assisting us since last 30 years. At the outset, I express my deep sense of gratitude to Freedom From Religion Foundation for confirming, conferring this award to man's. We believe this confer recognition of our dedication and work at such an international forum will ignite our aspiration and will help us in increase the credibility and reliance of our work among people. Two years before, Avijit Roy was hacked in Dhaka. Dr. Narendra Dabolkar was shot in Pune. Many free thinkers of this decade have been assassinated in the name of religion, traditions, and culture. During the decade, this tendency has become prevalent around the world, especially in developing countries. Further painful is the attitude of the authorities who in most cases are unsuccessful in arresting the assassins. The prevalent silence of the authorities and lack of political will to address these matters has driven the rise in intolerance and insecurity. The eradication of superstition in a society where it is used for socio-political and economical gain of the few has become a hazardous task. The field demands a lot of patience and rationality. It also needs deep-rooted courage to face the challenges of work that can literally take your life. An award entitled with the word courage becomes complementary to our work. In the course of civilization, we have lost several free thinkers whose sole aim was to promote secularism, humanity, science, equity, justice, scientific temperament, and enlighten our fellow people. I have mixed emotions of pleasure and misery while receiving the award for the philosophy and ethics of courage in the 21st century world. That is on one hand based on science and technology, while on the other it lacks rational thoughts and is full of superstition. Fundamentalists and extremists have, been, have not been able to digest the dialogue, sympathy, and acceptance that was created by man's and fellow rationalists. Dr. Narendra Dabokar has sacrificed his life for the cause of our work. Not only Dabulkar, but other rationalists, activists, and social reformers like Comrade Govind Pansare, Professor M. M. Kalburgi, and journalist Gauri Lankesh has sacrificed their life for the courage they embodied in the thoughts, ideas, and principles of their works. Officials and agencies have claimed this, these assassinations to be linked to religious extremists. I decide dedicate this award for their memories and contribution. All of us gathered here dream of a society full of mukta mono or free thinkers. Talking of the work, ideas, and perception of man's, man's has been working on such ideas for the past 30 years. The eradication of superstition is a phrase coined in today's socio-cultural contest in the state of Maharashtra due to the contribution of the Maharashtra Andhashita Nimon Samiti and the creative leadership of Dr. Narendra Dabulkar. He established this organization on 9th August 1989. On 9th August 2019, 
to celebrate the 30 years of work, our work, we organized an international conference in Mumbai, man's campaigns, campaigns, imaginations, works, and organizational skill have spread the work with our group currently having 350 branches. The base of the, this work is the ideas of reforms, reformers in Maharashtra who sit, criticize the caste system, superstitions, and rituals. Man's continue this legacy of work with creative activism and organization. Man started its work with exposing so-called God man and people claiming themselves as the incarnation of God on earth. Later, the work developed the basis of scientific temperament, criticism of religion, and the principles of secularism, rationality, and humanity. The key role of man man's in passing a bill that outlaws black magic, black magic in a prime example of its journey. The organization's 30 years of the work is based on the following principles and may be divided into three decades. In the first decade, man existed with five to 10 branches on a handful of volunteers. The achievements of the first decade was to convey the importance of our work. Society accepted that there were superstitions and they must be eradicated. We exposed many godmen, black magic incidents, etc. And people were attracted towards this work, especially the work in the so second decade. Certify man as a chief whistleblower of the work and recognize in examples in the field. Man's work on a variety of children's issues. In third decade, the journey from constructive criticism of religion to rationality become our catchphrase since it reflects the fundamentals of man's. Man's has its commitment to two major aspects. First, its commitment to reformists of Maharashtra and India who had a message of morality, ethics, brotherhoods, rationality, humanity, justice, and non-violence through their work. Second, the Constitution of India that supports all these things through his, its preamble and constitutional provisions. It does not make difference between man and woman and permits both the genders of functions at all places. It does not support any inhuman and atrocities rituals that decreases the person's dignity and freedom. The constitutional behavior of India, so Indian society, will lead it to a society that man aspires to as an ethical and rational society. On experience of 30 years, show that superstition is one of the main hurdles in forming forming a humanitarian society. Unscientific temperament don't, don't give ample space for the development of the woman downtrodden and deprived at the same time express, expose these classes to rampant exploitation. Superstitions aid Godman in creating ritualistic businesses. Unscientific thoughts, lack of criticism, and evolution of customs, fake pride of traditions, and blind follow, fellow, fellowship in religion be, leads to all sorts of exploitation. Man has worked on inclusive and innovative programs such as constitutional festivals, rational selection of life partner, awareness about pseudoscience, annihilation of caste councils, etc. Time and again, man has organized innovative activities. Our encounters with communities all have always kept our work dynamic. We have two major assets to work effectively and creatively. 
First, our activists that work in this organization without any personal desires. Their tireless efforts have taken these organizations to this stage after 30 years. And the second asset is the acceptance and recognitions by society and media of this work. Eradication of superstition means eradication of ang hate, anger, greed, fear, unfair competitions, and negative emotions through inculcating love, co cooperation, brotherhood, tolerance, peaceful coexistence, sympathy, reliance for each other, rationality and reason. This is not a momentary journey. It may take hundreds of years together. One generation is not enough for it. Generations together must contribute for this. I, on behalf of man, appeal you all on this occasion to be our comrades, supporters, and companions. We strongly feel that like-minded organizations that struggle for the same cause here in the United States as we do in India must collab collaborate, collaborate in addressing the, the issues. We can share our scholarships and expertise with each other of our work since we are co-traveler on the same road, the road that leads the world towards humanity, rationality, and equality. We believe that rationality should be adopted on a wide scale. Man has this humble standpoint while organizing 20th August as National Scientific Temper Day. Human life has traveled to scientific Scientific, scientific thoughts through logic, assessment, and an inclusive thoughts process. The next developed stage of this is rationality. We must nurture and renew a rationality primarily based on carving the values and ethics of life towards a comprehensive perspective, a determination to change human personality based on only thoughts is not enough because human personality is a combination of thoughts and emotion, emotions. So we, have, we must nurture human personality based on rational thoughts and ethical emotions too. Increasing violence and bigotry are creating frenzy along with a self-central society due to the influence of globalization. This has already created several challenges, but we are firm in our attempts to form a unity of our work. We, on this occasion, declare that man is born to shoulder and any responsibility, either minor or major, towards this gigantic task to form a union of all like-minded organizations towards the creation of a rational world. We want an alliance of the humanist and rationalist from all over the planet. They should come together and travel hand in hand towards the purpose of creating a beautiful and flourishing world. Thank you.